the ventilation plan for my camper relies upon the use of the back hatch and the roof hatch for through ventilation, but I also have four uh, ceiling mounted uh, ventilation fans that also I want to be able to pull air in from one side and exhaust air from the other. Um, and I want to be able to do this interchangeably, so I need a, a uh, reversing switch on all my fans. When I bought these Max Air fans, uh, they came with exhaust only, and if you want to buy into a more expensive version of the fan, you can get something with a reversing switch, but, it, but it's quite expensive, and, have, and having bought four fans, I really wasn't interested in paying a premium uh, for something that I could do. So. One of the things that I've done is to modify each of my ceiling fans with a reversing switch. And that's the, the information I'm going to give to you now is how to do that. It's a fairly simple endeavor to take the fan out and I'm going to remove it from the camper. The factory configuration for the fan includes this elevating knob that raises the outside cover and the on and off switch. And you push the on switch up to four times to get it to turn on. Um, and so what I have, this is one of the fans that I've modified, and so what you'll see over here is a dual position switch. In one direction it is uh, a forward direction which exhausts air, and in the other position it's a reverse position which brings air in. And so my plan is to be able to, you know, whatever the wind direction might happen to be during the day, and I want to ventilate the camper in a certain direction, so I set one, one or two of my fans to bring air in and one or two of my fans to bring air out. This is the fan on the shower. It's not been modified. Um, I'm not exactly sure how the mechanism of the Max Air fan, or the, the, the Fantastic fan, but this is a Max Air. So in order for me to take this out, the first thing I'm going to do is remove the four screws that hold the trim ring in. And the reason I do this is because the wiring is in here. And uh, as you can see, this fan is not connected presently. I had the failure of the fan controller, so I left it disconnected. <coughs> in order to access the rest of the screws, you have to take the, the filter screen off, which is done by rotating these plastic catches. Take the filter screen off, and now we have four more screws. Also have to take the elevating knob out which is single screw, and the rest of the assembly is four screws. And you have to be careful when you take the last one off because it will fall out. So one of the, one of the things that's also in here is a plastic sleeve that goes right on to here. <clears throat> it's a little bit difficult to get back in, but uh, that's all that's necessary to take it out. Now I'm going to take this into the shop and show you what is necessary. Uh, at the same time, I'm also going to replace, if you can see, the, the burn spot on the controller. Uh, for some reason, Max Air decided that it was not necessary for this controller to tolerate more than 13.8 volts. Uh, so when you're, when you're charging in your camper, the, uh, the system voltage goes up uh, significantly above 13.8 volts, and we'll burn these out. Uh, go figure, you can't charge, can't charge your battery with a Max Air fan. But evidently, Max Air has rectified the problem, and they're now shipping out controllers that are available under warranty, which I had two of my fans fail. And that's what I'm repairing now and adding the, the reversing switch in at the same time. The, the, the most important phase of rewiring this, uh, this control fascia to, to achieve this, I'm going to go through some of the tools I needed and use and some of the parts. Um, so here's the controller frame. Um, in order to do this job, I've got several different quick disconnect connectors, which I'll talk about in a minute. I have a glue gun, which is used to stake the wiring down. I have a, a Dremel tool, which is used to saw the hole through to mount the switch. I have a soldering iron because I'm actually going to do some soldering work on the connectors here. You don't have to. It's just the way I like to do it. It's a little more clean. Um, I have a new controller board. So this controller is actually burnt out. I don't know if you can see the burn, burn mark on it, but it, it did fail. 
Um, and so I'm replacing the controller, but there, there are a choice of two different switches to use. So the, all that you really need to do this is the, the switch and some terminals and a little bit of wire uh, and, and some tooling. So there are two different switches here, and I'm going to explain to you uh, this is the one you're most likely to find. This is the best one. Uh, they both work. And I actually have both of them. I was on the road this summer, and uh, this switch was the only thing that was available to me on Amazon, which was going to get it to me at a time that I needed it before I moved on. So this is, I have this in two of my fans. I now have this one in two of my other fans, which is the one I prefer. Um, if you look at the back of both these switches, you'll see six contacts on the back of them. All six of these contacts are going to be used in this project. Uh, it's not particularly challenging to wire this when, when you see it, but I'll stop and, and take a little bit of time to explain to you exactly how to wire it. I prefer the smaller switch. It's cleaner. This is a double pole, double throw switch, meaning double throw means it has two positions, double pole meaning it has two separate sets of contacts. So these three contacts on this side are for one polarity and these three contacts on the other side are for another. Same thing uh, with this switch, except this is what's called a triple throw switch. This has three positions. It has a position in the center, which in this case is going to be off. It has a position on the, the one side there, which will be forward or reverse, depending on how it's wired. And then the other one is, is a forward or reverse. In this particular case, you don't need the center off position. Um, it can be useful to you because one of the things that you're going to have to do in use is when you want to switch directions for the fan, you must make sure it's off and then it's spun all the way down before you reverse it. You don't want to just turn it off and while the fan is spinning, flick the switch. Um, I won't go into why, but don't do it. Um, so having the center off position here is actually convenient. If you have the fan on and set to a certain speed, you can put it to the center off, let it spin down, and then you can switch to the other direction. Anyway, this switch is much larger. It uses uh, quarter inch quick disconnect terminals, uh, which are most common, and so it's easiest to wire this one. Uh, this switch uses 3 8 quick disconnect terminals, which I have, but are fairly uncommon, fairly difficult to find. Um, this switch is a DigiKey part, and it looks like the DigiKey part number is SW307 November Delta. Um, and so this is my preferred switch. These are fairly hard to find, uh, this size and, and et cetera, but this is, this is the one I'm going to use. So this switch, um, and you'll get to see these a little closer when, I, when I, we get to wire them. But So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole in this corner right here to mount the switch. In order to do that, I'm going to use a Dremel tool with a, with a cutoff wheel in it. Uh, not the cleanest, but it's good enough. Um, I'm going to route some wiring, which actually I'm going to use the excess wiring that comes on this um, controller board to wire this whole thing up. It only requires a couple extra feet of wiring because, again, we've got to go from here back to here, here over the switch and then back over here and the motor connects on this side. Um, I have a hot glue gun. Uh, it's all warmed up right now. I use that to glue the wiring in place so when I put this back into the, into the housing that the wiring doesn't get trapped anywhere. Um, Again, a soldering iron and solder. And here's my 3 8 quick disconnect contacts. And here's some quarter inch quick disconnect contacts that I'm also going to use on the power connections. To keep a little of the mystery out of things, um, I'm going to pause here. I've got my switch installed. Um, I don't care for the, the, the grips on this switch, so you saw me putting a couple of beads of hot glue on either side of the switch to keep it installed. Um, before I cut into, the, cut into the controller here a little bit, I think it's worth uh, discussing a few moments what we have. So the big long wire here is the power input to the controller. I'm going to use this excess wire here to wire my switch. And so you're going to see me cutting it off. Um, the short wire here, this is the wire that plugs to the motor. And so here's the design philosophy of the reversing switch. The power into the controller board has to remain properly positive and negative inputs to it or you're going to destroy the controller board. 
So where we're going to wire this switch is, on the, is between the controller and the motor, because all we really want to do is reverse whatever the, the controller board is doing input to the motor, because the, the motor will run in the opposite direction if, it, if the polarity is changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder these two leads, and I'm going to keep this wire inviolate, because what I'm going to have to do is when this is installed here, I'm going to need to run wires from these two ports over to the reversing switch, and then back around here, and so this motor connector can come out in this area right here. So uh, that's what you're going to see me do. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm attaching some quick disconnect terminals so I can hook up the power. This is a heat shrink terminal connector. This is not your standard crimper. These heat uh, shrink terminals and nylon terminals both. Okay, so this is a nylon terminal. Nylon is a thinner insulating material as are these heat shrink terminals. They require a, a terminal crimper that has a, a, a tighter crimp to it, which is what this is. Um, but this can also be used with vinyl terminals. Um, so if you ever, if you're a user of these uh, heat shrink butt connectors, uh, really nice, and you'll see me using some here shortly. Uh, it's it essential that you get this, the correct terminal crimper for it, or your crimps will be too, too tight, too loose if you have a uh, standard crimper. When I install my fans, I don't like to uh, hardwire things because if I need to get into them, I want to be able to disconnect them. For wiring for these quick disconnect terminals is that this black wire, in this case, this is the, the, the positive terminal. Positive terminals receive power, so they should be a male connector. So this is a 18 gauge male terminal. And again, my crimp, crimpers will, is designed for either nylon or shrink terminals. And the female terminal should go on to the ground side. So this is, this, is, this is the method that I use to make sure that my wires are not accidentally uh, reversed. Of course, obviously, it also requires me to be as diligent when I'm putting the, the other end of the connector on there. So this heat shrink terminals are a wonderful thing. Um, they take a little bit of effort to, to shrink them down. Okay, now comes the magic. In order to wire this switch, we have, so we have, we have power coming in on these two leads into the control. When the control is turned on, it sends power out these two wires here, intending it to go to the motor. But here's where we're going to intercept the, the motor power and we're going to either send it straight through or we're going to send it in reverse polarity. So the way to wire this switch is that these two wires, and it doesn't really matter which one, these two wires are going to be measured to, made, uh, uh, connected to the two center terminals on the, on the switch. And this will allow us to send, so power comes in the two center terminals 
and it will either come out the, this two end or these two ends. And so this is the, depending on the switch position. So this is how we're going to do it. This is a 3 8 Molex brand uh, terminal, nylon terminal. These uh, fully insulated terminals are a bit of a challenge to get on this small switch, uh, but it's what I have. It's actually it's what I like. It does not matter which side is positive and which side is negative. Okay, so there's the power input. Now I'm going to build a small cable with the, the, the motor plug and my extra wire that's going to go from there all the way back over to here. So that's what you're going to see me doing in the next couple of minutes. Okay, this is the wiring assembly that we're going to use to connect the switch. You can see that we have two terminals on the end of each wire. And so, in order to connect this up right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the white wire on the same side as the white wire. And in this case, the black wire on the same side as the black wire. <coughs> so right now, the way that this works is the power comes in the white wire and if the switch is in the correct position it leaves on the white wire. The opposite side of the switch is going to be going to be wired exactly opposite. The white wire will go to the black side. That's one of the downsides of having a very small switch and big fingers is trying to get things together. That was a bit more of a struggle than it should have been. So again, going back through how the switch operates. The side nearest me is the black side. When the switch is in one direction, it comes in the black wire and it goes out the black wire. On the opposite side, it comes in the white wire and goes out the white wire. That's the, that's the standard motor direction. So if you want to reverse directions, just switch the switch to the opposite side, comes in the black wire, goes out the white wire, and comes in the white wire and goes out the black wire. So we've reversed both sides. Remember I told you we were going to use all six positions. So this assembly is done. Other than dressing the wire, this is what is involved uh, in making this switch work. You can see all it took was a little bit of wiring and a, and a switch and we've now got a reversible fan for about $5. Oh.